you doing? Welcome to a, another edition of RC Styles. Today we're gonna do a reaction video. Let's get into it. What do you miss? Authorities in Raleigh, North Carolina announced that a young man is facing 40 misdemeanor charges this week, just a few days after a venomous snake well, even have that was captured snakes. loose near his home. According to reports, police were alerted to the situation on June 28th when they received a call about a mysterious snake near their home in North Raleigh. The reptile turned out to be a spitting zebra cobra belonging to 21-year-old Christopher Gifford, who lived half a mile away. When police investigated the home where Gifford lived with his parents, they found roughly 75 other snakes in the basement, wow. many of which were also highly dangerous. Though owning these kinds of reptiles as pets is not illegal in North Carolina, there are rules. Who wants to sleep in a house with that many venomous snakes? Yeah, you got them all locked up, but it only takes one time, like this time, for them to get loose and mess everybody up. I'm good off of venomous snakes in the house. Rules that owners are supposed to follow, several of which Gifford had ignored. The animals were allegedly seized after it was discovered that they were not being kept in the proper enclosures and that some had been mislabeled, which is also a violation. To make matters worse, the missing zebra cobra in question reportedly escaped almost a year ago in November wow. of 2020, but Gifford never informed police. So Thankfully, the, the snake was captured two days after it was spotted, and no one was harmed. Of That's the 40 cool misdemeanor snake. charges that Gifford now faces, 36 are a result of storing the reptiles in improper enclosures. The four remaining charges are for mislabeling those enclosures, as well as failing to report the zebra cobra's escape. Man makes fraudulent now on call to the strike police after getting. An Ohio man is facing a first degree misdemeanor charge this week after he allegedly called and reported a fake shooting to distract police after he was pulled over. That's the type of stuff that you see people try to do in the movies. He really thought he had it sold up. The incident took place last Saturday afternoon on July 3rd, when 34-year-old Muhammad Kabir was pulled over outside a Walmart Supercenter in South Euclid, Ohio. In addition to driving with both a suspended license and expired plates, his two-year-old son, who was with his wife in the back seat of the vehicle, was not sitting in a car seat. Instead of accepting that he was going to receive multiple traffic citations, Kabir instead apparently decided that the best course of action was to try and avoid the situation altogether by calling 911 and reporting a fake shooting near the Walmart in an attempt to distract the officers that had pulled him over. Unfortunately for Kabir, the call was traced back to his cell phone and was found to be a match to where he had been pulled over for the traffic stop. Wow. He was then arrested for making a false report. They probably in addition to Kabir's first degree misdemeanor charge for the false report, he faces numerous charges for his traffic violations. See what happens when you watch too much TV. Man with fireworks in the store. Authorities in Nashville, That's Tennessee say that a 25 year old woman has been arrested this week following an investigation into a fire earlier this month at a fast food restaurant where she worked. The incident began on July 5th when firefighters were called to a Taco Bell location on Nolensville Pike. A fire had started inside the restaurant and employees called 911, telling authorities that they had accidentally locked themselves out. Firefighters were able to force entry into the building and extinguish the blaze, but by that time it was estimated that more than $30,000 in damage had been done to the restaurant. Coming out her pocket. A subsequent investigation requested by Taco Bell management soon uncovered the surprising cause of the fire. It turned out that it had started when employees began playing with fireworks inside. I mean, these are grown people acting like kids inside the workplace. I mean, come on, man. What they expect is going to happen. Surveillance footage taken from the restaurant showed the employees first locking the doors to the building's dining room so that no customers could get in before running around with fireworks in their hands. Some of them then went into the men's washroom for a period of time before coming out and placing more fireworks in a trash bin by the dining room door. The employees then reportedly left the restaurant to film the trash can from outside. When it started to smoke, they tried to get back inside, but soon realized that they had forgotten about the locked doors and were now stuck outside. What? The shift leader present at the time of the incident, Courtney Mays, was arrested and charged on July 12th with felony aggravated arson. 
Authorities say that more arrests and charges may follow in the coming days. Mays remains in the Davidson County Jail on $5,000 bond. Well, they on drugs? Representatives from the Tulsa Police Department say that a wanted woman was successfully arrested this week after she commented on a social media post concerning her case. The story began on Wednesday, July 14th, when the police department released a weekly most wanted post on their Facebook page about a woman named Lorraine Graves. Graves had been charged with accessory to murder in the shooting death of her relative Eric Graves, which what? took place at the St. Thomas Square plan? Apartments back in March. The two men accused of actually carrying out the shooting, Jaden and Gabriel Hobson, were already in custody, but Graves was nowhere to be found. Police alleged that Graves helped dispose of the murder weapon in the case by driving one of the suspects to another apartment complex, where it was handed off to another person. After seeing the Facebook post asking for information concerning her whereabouts, Graves apparently found herself too tempted not to get involved, and left a comment underneath the post seemingly joking about whether or not there was any reward money. She used her personal profile to leave the comment, and it appears that she was unaware that this would allow authorities to track her. Wow. She was arrested by officers from the Tulsa Police Department the following afternoon. Her she, bond is so currently set at $500,000. California man arrested a fire gun. Authorities in Ventura County, California, say that a 44-year-old man is in custody this week after he allegedly fired shots at a firefighting helicopter. The incident began just after 9 p.m. on Wednesday night when the helicopter was conducting training exercises near Lake Casitas, roughly 80 miles northwest of Los Angeles. That's when crew members aboard the vehicle reportedly noticed a man named Joshua Chimaruski firing at them with a handgun from the ground below. Thanks to the quick actions of the helicopter's pilot, neither the crew members nor the vehicle were struck by bullets during the shooting. They were able to follow Chimaruski as he allegedly drove away in his car before stopping to fire more shots and taking off on foot. Authorities were able to track down Chimarusi after an hours-long search involving police dogs and another helicopter. He was taken into custody early on Thursday morning on suspicion of attempted murder, as well as numerous firearms-related offenses. At the time of this recording, police have not indicated what prompted the bizarre and dangerous attack. He wanted to go to jail. He wanted to get locked up. Texas team arrested up a stunning value from dead body. Posted a crime on Snapchat. This week, Representatives from the Bexar County Sheriff's Office this. announced that they had arrested two teenage girls after they allegedly stumbled across a dead body and decided to steal jewelry from the deceased person. You know what it is, these small cities, they don't be having nothing going on. That's why they be doing all this crazy dumb stuff. They need some activities. The incident took place a few minutes after 8.30 a.m. near the intersection of Sunday Song and Charismatic Roads just outside of San Antonio. That's when the 16 and 17 year old came across the body of a young man who appeared to have taken his own life by hanging himself from a railing near a drainage ditch. Following the grisly discovery, the girls contacted another friend who called 911. However, police say that before they could arrive, the teens took a gold chain with a pendant from the man's body. The crime was discovered when footage of the theft shot by the teenagers began to circulate on social media. The girls allegedly filmed themselves taking the valuables and posted the video. They had a lot of time to play around that body. The Snapchat. Good when one. police officers saw the video, they immediately recognized the teenagers as being the witnesses at the scene where the body was discovered. Both were promptly arrested. The 17-year-old has since been identified as Bethany Martin, who was Bethany. released from jail on a $2,000 bond on Wednesday. The 16-year-old has not been named due to her age. Both have been charged with theft from a human corpse. Following their arrests, the girls admitted to the theft and returned the pendant to the deceased man's family. However, they claimed that they had not kept the gold chain that was with it. The chain has yet to be recovered. I mean, According is it that to one serious? Of friends, she told her that she took the jewelry because it, quote, matched her fashion style. Get a job. Women charged at the film teasing grizzly bear in a viral video. An Illinois woman is facing charges this week, a little more than two months National after Park. viral footage of her Ohio. was allegedly captured violating wildlife protection laws in Yellowstone National Park. According to reports, the incident occurred sometime in mid-May of this year, 
when a woman named Samantha Daring was visiting Yellowstone's Roaring Mountain area. Just before 5 p.m., a group of tourists in the area noticed a mother grizzly bear and her two cubs, who were coming closer to them. In accordance with park regulations that require visitors to stay at least 300 feet away from the bears, the tourists quickly retreated to their vehicles. Exactly. That's what that I'm doing. With the ex I'm not trying to sit around and observe the bears up close. If they come close, I back away. Exception of Samantha Daring. Instead of moving away from the bears, Daring walked closer until she was within roughly 15 feet of the grizzlies and began taking pictures of them with her phone. The tense interaction was filmed by witnesses who captured the moment when the mother grizzly bear bluff charged her before mm. retreating. Mm. It was only after that that Daring finally walked away. The footage was shared on social media and quickly went viral, where it caught the attention of Yellowstone Park Rangers. Within days of the clip circulating online, the officials posted an appeal to the Yellowstone Facebook page, asking for help identifying the woman in the video. She's the type of folks that want to shoot apart if the bear had attacked her. Daring, who had been following the page until that point, promptly unfollowed, but it wasn't enough to stop her from being found. Someone who had seen her name tagged in the video reached out to the park rangers, after which a warrant was obtained to search Daring's Facebook page. Images Go that she him. had taken of the grizzlies were soon uncovered. Daring has now been charged with feeding, touching, teasing, frightening, or intentionally disturbing wildlife, as well as violating closure limits. She is due to appear in court on August 26th. Working overtime. We've been accident and shoot for anyone or use a gun, laser sight to play with cats. Police in Kenosha, Wisconsin, wow. say that an unidentified 19-year-old woman is facing charges this week after she accidentally shot her friend while playing with the laser sight on a handgun. The incident began on the afternoon of August 10th when the 19-year-old was visiting an apartment in the city with a 21-year-old friend who brought the weapon. At some point, the 19-year-old, who had been drinking, picked up the handgun, turned on the laser sight, and began to point it at the floor to get a cat that lived in the apartment to chase it. A short time later, the gun went off, striking the 21-year-old man who was standing in the doorway in the thigh. Yes. The man left the scene and went into another apartment where police were called. When they arrived, a tourniquet was applied to the man's leg to stop the bleeding. The 19-year-old woman has since been charged with negligent use of a weapon. She claimed that the whole thing was an accident and that she thought that the magazine had been taken out of the gun at the time that she was handling it. You can feel the at weight. the time of this recording, the 21-year-old man's condition is not known. However, authorities have said he will also be facing charges. He was out on bond at the time of the incident, one of the conditions of which prohibited him from having a weapon. Was it his weapon? I guess so. Authorities in Hokanee County, South Carolina, say that a 31-year-old man is in another small little town after he allegedly stole a horse Mountain and rest, took South it to Carolina. his father's house. The incident began on August 9th when a witness spotted Gary Cobble Jr. riding the horse down a road in the community of Mountain Rest before walking it inside the residence. After the bizarre sighting was reported to police, deputies contacted Cobble's father, who told them that his son was not supposed to be there. The father met authorities at his house, and upon entering, they immediately noticed horse species there. in the living room. Country lane. A quick search of the residence revealed both Cobble and the stolen horse hiding in a bedroom. According to reports, wow. aside from a small cut on one of the horse's front legs, the animal was unharmed and was calm at the time police found it. Cobble was taken into custody on charges of stealing livestock. At the time of his arrest, police said that he also had numerous stealing other warrants out for recent livestock. unrelated burglaries and thefts in the area. He is currently being held at the Elkney County Detention Center. That's wild. He tried to hide the horse in the house. Authorities in San Mateo County, California, say that a 35-year-old man Red is facing Woodson. two misdemeanor charges this week after he unwittingly broke into a local jail. The incident began on the night of August 13th when an officer at the Maple Street Correctional Facility in Redwood City responded to a late night alarm that had been triggered. When the officer went to investigate, he allegedly found Moises Robles sitting in the lobby of the jail's transitional housing unit. How? Though he initially thought Robles was an inmate trying to escape, when he noticed that he was wearing street clothes, he soon realized that the situation was much stranger. Mm. 
Surveillance footage revealed that Robles had managed to get into the jail by climbing an exterior and interior fence at the facility. What? Once on the grounds, he had climbed up to a second floor patio and got in through the patio door. How? During questioning, the camera Robles in? allegedly admitted to being under the influence of meth and alcohol and also had credit cards in his possession that belonged to other people. He told police that when he broke in, he was trying to get away from a man with a gun and that he didn't realize that the building was a jail facility. On August 18th, Robles pled not guilty to two misdemeanor charges of trespassing and identity theft. His next court date is in November. In December? Why would you want to smuggle some meat? Representatives from U.S. Customs and Border Patrol in Texas Paso, say that Texas. an El Paso man was recently fined after he tried to smuggle 350 pounds of meat products into the country from Mexico. According to reports, the incident That's took place at approximately 6 a.m. on August 26th when a 20-year-old man in. pulled That's up to the border crossing his 2012 Honda Odyssey. Despite saying that he had no food items to declare, border agents immediately noticed some of the poorly concealed meat products. A secondary inspection of the vehicle revealed 31 rolls of pork bologna and two rolls of turkey ham hidden under blankets, under the seats, inside what? a duffel bag, and even in the car's center console. Poorly concealed. The man said he planned to resell the items in the U.S. According to Border Patrol, the large meat hall was seized and destroyed, and the man was given a $1,000 fine for failing to declare the products. Why are we sneaking? Are we that low on food? You gotta sneak food into the U.S.? Authorities in Broward County, Florida, say that a Chicago woman was arrested and is facing charges this week after she fabricated a bomb threat at a local airport because she was angry that she had missed her flight. Dang. The incident began on the night of Monday, she September 6th, get back to Chicago. when 46-year-old Marina Verbitsky arrived at the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport mm -hmm. with her husband and son. After being informed by JetBlue employees that she and her family had arrived too late to catch their too flight late. because it was already being taxied on the runway, mm -hmm. Verbitsky flew into a rage. The mother began by berating employees, hurling insults at them, and going on a profanity-laden tirade. Wow. However, according to reports, it was when she learned that her family's checked luggage was already on board the departing plane oh, wow. that the 46-year-old truly snapped. Instead of taking a second to try and calm down or consider her options, Verbitsky allegedly decided to ratchet up the tense situation even further, telling staff that she had stashed a bomb in one of her suitcases. Oh my goodness. Though the threat was completely bogus, officials yeah, were still matter. forced to treat the claim as a credible threat, and the plane was rerouted, evacuated, and thoroughly searched to ensure everyone's but safety. she's not gonna get on the plane? When no sign of any danger was found, Verbitsky was promptly arrested and is now facing a charge of false reporting concerning planting a bomb, explosive, or weapon of mass destruction. Well, she a judge also happen. ordered that she undergo a mental health evaluation. Exactly. A friend of the family, who requested to remain anonymous, told local media that Verbitsky's outburst and fake threat were the result of her being worried about her son missing school the next day, saying, quote, it was a mistake. That don't mean that you act crazy. That ain't, that ain't the problem. Something else, you got deeper than that. A tense standoff between authorities and an armed 18-year-old yeah, suspect took a bizarre turn this week when a nude, intoxicated woman dangerously drove through the middle of the scene in a golf cart. According to reports, the incident took place on the morning of Sunday, September 5th, when authorities tried to deal with 18-year-old Miles Abbott, who had climbed onto the roof of a residence in Dunedin and pointed his weapon at police. The tense situation caused the SWAT team to be called in, leading to an hours-long standoff. It was sometime during that situation that 28-year-old Boston resident Jessica Elizabeth Smith allegedly showed up driving a golf cart. Completely naked and smelling strongly of alcohol, Smith blew past several squad cars and ignored calls for her to leave the area as she drove into the perimeter where the standoff was happening and close to the house where Abbott was taking shelter. Mm. Smith was eventually taken into custody and charged with resisting an officer without violence. Abbott was also captured by police when the six-hour standoff came to an end and was treated for a self-inflicted gunshot wound to his leg mm. that he reportedly got while attempting to flee. He faces multiple charges, including loitering and prowling, aggravated assault on law enforcement, felon in possession of a firearm, 
carrying a concealed weapon, resisting an officer without violence, and grand theft. Activities and hobbies could go a long way in your life. Representatives from the California Highway Patrol say that a woman has been arrested this week after she was caught asleep and intoxicated behind the wheel of her Tesla while the vehicle drove on autopilot. The incident reportedly took place around 11 p.m. on September 16th while the woman and her vehicle were traveling along the 134 freeway in the Glendale area. Police were alerted to the situation I mean, is that by actually the drunk driving following her Tesla in the vehicle. Act, act, the Tesla was witnessed hitting a roadside wall and continued all. moving as the woman remained unconscious inside. The vehicle finally came to a standstill after officers overtook it in their patrol cars, triggering an automatic stop. Hmm. The woman was taken into custody on suspicion of DUI and was reportedly still asleep at the time her car was pulled over. But she she has since been identified as 31-year-old Carla Villanueva and was booked into the Metropolitan Detention Center jail. She probably did that before. Made it home with no problem. Representatives from Indiana's Vanderburg County Sheriff's Office say that a 61-year-old Evansville man will spend the next two months in jail after he repeatedly abused the 911 system by calling and informing dispatchers that he was tired. According to reports, Who the incident the took place on the evening of September 14th, when Daniel Schroeder made four of the bizarre phone calls to 911, informing them of his sleepy state. Finally, police got tired of dealing with him and went to his house and placed him under arrest. Authorities soon learned that this was not the first time that Schroeder had abused the 911 system. Just days earlier, he had pleaded guilty to a misuse of the system for calling to say that he was unhappy with a relative who was not following his rules. He was ordered to spend six months in jail for that offense, but the sentence was suspended, provided that he did not repeat the crime. It seems that Schroeder couldn't help himself, though. Right. A day after his arrest, the 61-year-old pled guilty to so violating the do. terms of his release and was sentenced to spend 60 days behind bars. His original sentence was amended to 60 days as well, and it is said that Schroeder will serve both of them concurrently. Hopefully, he'll have plenty of time to rest while locked up. Wow. Well, there you have it. Don't go move to a small town with nothing to do because you're going to start crazy. Ain't nothing like them doing stupid stuff. For the next time, RC Styles, like, subscribe, and I'll see you again. I'm out.